Hey everyone, so tonight's homework is going to be on page 65 and 66, even numbers only. We did um, in block two and three, we were able to, so Ms. Fadias' class and Ms. Workman's class, were able to do um, two and 14, so you only had eight problems left. Um, the first block, my class didn't have time to work on it, so you had the full 10 problems. I'm going to go ahead and review so that you know exactly what the expectation is. And you took notes on here, so you feel free to use your notes if you need to. We need to estimate, then find the product. So here we were talking about if we had 18 times 22, we are going to estimate first, and 18 is close to 20. 22 is close to 20. Because I have two zeros, I'm going to place this in my product already, and 2 times 2 is 4. So 20 times 20 is about 400, or 20 times 20 is 400. So that makes the 18 times 22 about 400. I'm going to take the same one, 18 times 22. Let me see if I can enlarge this a bit. Is that going to work? Nope, not at all. And I'm going to do it. I asked you all to get grids so that you will be able to keep things in line if you did not. Please make sure that you turn your paper to side to the sideways or to the sideways. You turn it um, horizontal so that you can keep your numbers in the correct uh, place value. We are doing the standard form. So it's 2 times 8 is 16. And I regrouped. Remember that it's almost it's like covering this up. This is the same concept of 18 times 2 because this is the ones. Two times one is two plus one is three. So that makes it 36. And I also know that 18 times two is 36. Now that I'm done with my ones, I'm gonna place a zero as my hero underneath that six. Because I'm moving over into my tens, I'm going to start with my um, partial product in the tens. So this is going to be for the, the row tens. I have 18 times 20. And so I know that um, that same thing, 18 times 2. So here it's 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. And it's 360. And you can see it right here. So that kind of makes it really quick to get that done. And now it's 6, 9, and 3. So the product of this one is 396. And I'm going to place it here. Anytime that you need to pause this video, please feel free to do so. Um, that way you can catch up on the notes. Number four. Um, I will just come over here for number four. I have 43 and 15. So 43 is closest to 40 times 15 is closest to 20. I have two zeros, I'm going to place those in my product, and four times two is eight. So the estimated um, answer is going to be eight. Looking over here, is 396 reasonable to a 400 estimation? And yes, it is. So now I'm going to multiply this number out, and I have 43 times 15. Again, it's going to be 1s times 1s and 1s times 10s, and we did that today in class. And you need it, you wrote that in your notes, or are supposed to have written that in your notes. So I'm going to cover my 1, because this is the same concept of 43 times 5, and I'm going to write my 1s here. 5 times 3 is 15. Regroup my 1. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So 43 times 5 is 215, and this is where I got it was from my 1s. Then I'm going over to my 10s, so I'm going to cross out my 1s because I'm finished with that. Put a 0 and um, 0 is my hero, put that under the 5 so that I don't start putting in the digits for my 10s. I need, because I'm in the 10s place that I'm starting, I'm going to start placing my answer in the 10s place here. This is the same concept of 43 times 10, like we did with our distributive property. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 4 is 4. So is 43 times 10 430? Yes, it is. 
I'm having, I'm writing this out so that you're understanding that full concept of standard form or standard algorithm. Five plus zero equals five. One plus three is four. Two plus four equals six. And so the answer is 645. So here I'm going to be placing, oh, I see what I did. I did three and not four. So I'll go ahead and do this one. Ah, they're all even numbers and I even have it. Two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. So if you're wanting to place that answer there, then go ahead and do it and then come in tomorrow and show me and I will give you a Jolly Rancher. Yeah, we'll just do it that way. But you need to come show me that you did that work. So let's go to number four. It's 58 times 37. And this is actually three. That was my bad. So if you want to do four, you can. I'm going to go ahead and place this out. 58 is closest to 60 times 37 is closest to 40. If you're not sure about the estimation, simply put that on a number line. And since it's five is in the tens, I'm gonna have 50, 55, 60. And I've replaced 58 on the number line. It's gonna be around right here. And it's gonna be closest to 60. I would do the same thing with the 37. Draw out a number line. Is this 30? 35, 40, I place 37 about right there, and that's gonna be closest to 40. I have two zeros, so I'm gonna place those into my products, or into my product, and six times four is 24. So that's 2,400. Now I'm gonna multiply this out. I have 58 times 37, Starting in my ones, this is that same idea with the distributive property. I'm gonna write ones here. Same thing of 58 times seven. This is my tens, 58 times 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover the three up. Seven times eight is 56. I'm regrouping. Seven times five is 35 plus five is 40 and I have 406. Next one, I'm gonna cross out my ones because I'm done with that. Place a zero is my hero under the six, the digit six and 406 to hold that spot. Start in the tens because my three, the digit three is in the tens place value. So three times eight, same concept of 30 times eight. That's 24. Three times five is 15 plus two is 17. I'm gonna add my partial products. That's six, four, 11, and it's 22,146. Looking at this, I'm gonna place this over here. Is this within reason? Sure, it's a little bit further away, but it's still within reason. We're still at the 2000, right? Okay, number six, we're moving into three digit by two digit. Again, anytime I'm going too quickly, simply pause it um, and catch up or rewind me and I can repeat it for you. So this is gonna be for number six. 922, if you're not sure about it, I'm gonna just draw a quick number line. I'm at 900. 950, because that's the mid-range, and then 1,000. 922 is on the left side right here, so it's going to be closest to 900 times, it'll still, still stay as 30. I have one, two, three, one, two, three zeros that I placed into my product, and nine times three is 27, so it's about 27,000. So let's go ahead and work this problem out. I have 900, excuse me, 22 times 30. 
I like this because anything multiplied by zero is zero. So you can place your equation like this, or you can have it set aside like this, 922 times, and then you have your three here with your zero out here. And I'll bring my zero in, and then I can multiply everything else. Same thing. So let's look at this one right here first. That's zero, zero, zero. Then I'm going to cross that out, and here's my zero, right? Got that zero there. Then three times two is six. Three times two is six. So I'm doing them together. Three times two is six. Three times two is six. Three times nine is 27. Three times nine is 27. So I got the same answer. I know that anything that I add with that zero is still going to give me that number because that's the identity property of addition, right? Any number added with zero is that same number. So you can do it this way, which is just a little bit more writing, or move your zero out and bring it straight down and then start to multiply everything else out. And if you hadn't heard on that one, then you've learned something new. So this is 27,660. Let's look at number eight. 372 is closest to 400 times 24 is closest to 20. I have one, two, three zeros, one, two, three that I'm putting in my product. And then four times two equals eight. So this is going to be about 8,000. So let's move it on over here. This is number eight. 372 times 24. Going to cover up my two because this is the same concept of 372 times four. This is using the distributive property. 372 times 20. This is in the ones and this is in the tens. Four times two is eight. Four times seven equals 28 and I'm regrouping. Four times three is 12 plus two more is 14. There we go. And I'm finished with my ones. So I'm crossing out my four, putting the zero down for zero is my hero. Moving over to the tens, the two, the digit two is in the tens place. So I'm going to start putting my partial product into the tens place. Two times two is four. Two times seven equals 14. Regroup my one. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 equals 7. And now I'm going to add those up. I have 8. 8 plus 4 equals 12. I regroup my 1. 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. And 7 plus 1 equals 8. That makes it at 8,928. It's still within reason. It's going to be about a thousand, well, less than a thousand. But if we were to round this, it would be 9,000. But it's still within reason. It's still within that 8,000, um, less than a thousand if we were to take the difference on that one. Let's look at 10, and then we have 12 left. 472 is closest to 500. 31 is closest to 30. I have one, two, three zeros, one, two, three zeros in my product, and five times three equals 15. So I'm going to have an answer that's about 15,000, probably a little bit more, um, but it's going to run in that range. So I'm going to be multiplying 472, and I'll move this over here to 10. So this is 472 times 31. 
This is the ones place, same concept of 472 times one. So you already know that it'll be 274, and that was easy peasy. Next is gonna be on my tens. So I'm crossing out my ones, putting a zero here. This is the same thinking of 472 times 30. And that's where we got our zero, right here. Three times two is equals six. Three times seven equals 21. Three times four is 12 plus two equals 14. We said it was going to be around 15,000, so let's check this out. 2 plus 0 equals 2. 6 plus 7 equals 13. Regroup 4, 5, 6, 4, and 1. So it's going to be about 15,000, so it's about right. 14,632, and this is within reason. Let's look at number 12. That's our last one. 658, putting it on a number line, it's going to be closest to 700 because it's already greater than 50. Times 83, putting it on a number line, it's just going to be 80 because it's going to be closest to 80. It's less than 85. So that's kind of your mid range, right? I have one, two, three, one, two, three in my product. Seven times eight equals 56. So I'm gonna have pretty big of an answer. So my answer is gonna be about 56,000 or around there it's estimated. So I have number 12 here, 658 times 83. This is the ones, the whole thinking behind the ones is 658 times three. For my tens, the thinking is 658 times 80. So I'm gonna cover my eight, because this is what I'm looking at. Three times eight equals, very good, 24. Regroup my two. Three times five equals 15, plus two equals 17. Regroup my one. Three times six is 18 plus one equals 19. So 658 times three is 1,974 ones. Bring down my zero, cross out my three, because I'm done with the ones. Moving over to the tens. Eight times eight equals 64, crossing this out plus six. Eight times five is 40 plus six equals 46. Cross this out plus four. Eight times six equals 48 plus four is 52. Very good. Remember my estimation is around 56,000. So it's 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. Okay, now let's go ahead and add this one up, four plus zero equals four, seven plus four equals 11, regroup. Nine plus one is 10, plus six equals 16, two, three, four, and bring down my five. So it's 54,614. So it's within range, right? So it's within reason, it would have been 55, so 56, so 54,614. And it's still within reason. Block two and three, we worked on this problem together and in my class, we did not have an opportunity of doing that. So let's work on this one. An African elephant in the wild will eat for as long as 16 hours each day. Ooh, that's a lot of food. For how many hours does an elephant eat in one year? And there are 365 days in one year. I need to write down my author's purpose. And remember the author's purpose is to find, and what are we going to find? To find how many hours an elephant eats in one year.
Here's my equation. It's 16 hours each day, 365 days. So it's 365 times 16. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to work on it on the grid sheet because it'll be a lot easier. So this is 14. 365 days in a year. Remember, we have to label times 16 hours each day. For the ones, same concept of 365 times 6. In the tens place value, it's 365 times 10. So things that should start clicking. 6 times 5 equals 30. I'm regrouping. 6 times 6 is 36 plus 3 equals 39. 6 times 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. So we have 2,190. I'm done with the ones, crossing out my six in the, the digit six in the ones place, bringing down the zero is my hero, that's right there. So now I'm just gonna write 365. So one times five is five, one times six is six, one times three is three. Now I'm going to add these up, zero. I'm gonna take five, one from the five and give it to the nine, so that makes it 10 with four left over is 14. Six, seven, eight, three, four, five. So for the year, it's 5,840 hours each year. That's a lot of hours to be munching. And I'm going to write 5,840 hours in one year. And I just abbreviated that. Okay, we have three more problems and then you're done for the evening. Let's look at number 16. To train for a race, Jesse rode his bike for 48 minutes every day for 17 days. Now he estimates that he rode his bike for about 400 minutes in all. Which of the following statements is true? So let's look at, so let's look at what we're solving for. So he said that he estimated that he rode for 400 minutes. I'm gonna take my 48, it's 48 minutes every day. Times for 17 days. If I wanted to estimate it, 48 is close to 50, 17 is close to 20. So what's my estimation there? Very good. I have one, two zeros. I'm going to place that into my product. And five times two is 1,000. Now let's look at our answer choices. Jesse estimated correctly. Did he estimate correctly? This is what he said, 400 minutes. This is what we came out with, 1,000. So no, he's like 600 minutes off. Let's look at this one, and I'm going to put um, 600 minutes off. Jesse rode his bike for about 1,000 minutes. Well, that's a really good possibility because that's what we came up with when we were estimating, right? Jesse rode his bike for about 70 minutes. No, we already said it was going to be 1,000 minutes. Jesse rode his bike for about 500 minutes. No, that's half of what we got. So the correct answer is B. Let's look at number 18. The Parents Club buys 12 cartons of pretzels to sell as refreshments at a soccer game. There are 75 bags of pretzels in one carton. How many bags of pretzels do the parents have? Author's purpose. To find how many or total number of pretzel bags. Pretzel bags parents have. 
Oh, I put the wrong and not need that there. I'm going to cross that out. P prep soul bags. I'm going to just put in all. Or you can put total. So now I'm going to multiply it out. I had 12 cartons and in each carton is 75 bags. Okay, so 12 is closest to, I'm going to do a quick estimate. 12 is closest to 10. 75 is closest to 80. So that's going to be about 800. So I'm kind of looking at here on where we're going to be. Okay. So... Now let's see where we're going to do. So it's going to be 800 or more. So we'll just see. This is just an estimate. So now I'm going to, let's just see how close that it's reasonable. This is number 18. Number 18, let's see, 12 times 75. Okay, so this is the ones. This is the same as, um, I'm going to actually just do, Twelve times five, and then on my tens, twelve times seventy, and you could have reversed it. You could have did seventy-five times twelve. So, but um, I did it this way. You can do it the other way. You don't have to do it this way. You can, um, if you have another way of doing it, go for it. So five times two equals ten. I regroup my one. Five times one is five plus one is six. So 12 times 5 is 60, and that's what I've got there. I'm done with the, the digit 5 in the 1's place. 0 is my hero, and I'm moving over. 7 times 2 equals 14. Regroup my 1. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8. And now I'm going to add those up. 0, 10, 900. So we're about off about 100. So the correct answer is 900. It's always good to start practicing those estimations so that you can see um, that we were, that you know that it's like, okay, wait a second. It's about 800, but am I going to have more? Because if one other carton had 75, that would have been 875. So I know that that can't work. And I had, so actually like 150, right? 75 twice. So if you can see how you're going to do that mental math. Um, so we get, we're looking at 900. Great. All right, let's look at number 20. A farmer plants a field that can fit 27 rows of pepper plants with 14 plants in each row. Oh, wow. Now she can also fit four rows of pumpkins with four plants in each row. How many plants can the farmer fit in her field? Author's purpose. To find the total number, I'm gonna put a hash, hash, hash number sound, pine sign. Pine, Pound sound, um, sign. Oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister, right? The pound sign for number. So to find the total number of plants that fit in the field or in field. Okay, or you can put to find how many plants a farmer can fit in the field. You can do that as well. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. Okay, so let's take a look at the first problem. For the pepper plants, for the pepper plants, 
She can fit 27 rows of peppers with 14 plants in each row. So what's my equation? Yeah, way to go, 27 times 14. For the pumpkins, she can also fit four rows with four plants in each. What's my equation? Very good, four rows times four plants in each. To um, kind of draw that out, guys, because you can sketch it out, I'm going to actually turn this paper over. I'm not going to draw out 27 rows, but I can do it on my grid where 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If I kept doing that, right now I have two rows of 14. You can get in the idea that if you continued further here, and I'm just going to write um, row 27, though it's not, but it's just so that you can get an idea that this is the array 27 rows of 14 in each. 27 groups with 14 in each. So that kind of gives you an idea. That would be the pepper plants. So this is 27 times 14. The other one, well, you had pumpkins, so you had four rows with four plants. One, two, three, four plants. One, two, three, four. That's two groups of four. Now you have three groups of four and four groups of four. So this is going to be the pumpkin. And here you had four times four. So you can create a visual so that you can see the equation. Does that help out? Because this is where we get into that. You'll understand it, but then when it comes to putting it into a story problem, it makes it a little bit more complex. All right, so now I'm going to move over, turn my paper back over. And I know that it's going to be 27 times 14 plus, because I'm adding these together, I need to find the total number of plants that can fit in the field. Four times four. I am going to solve this problem first where I have 27 times 14. This concept for the ones, and I'm doing this so that you can get practice. 27 times four. And on the tens, 27 times 10. So we're just redistributing. This is what we're seeing when we're doing standard form. Four times seven is equals 28. Four times two is eight plus two is 10. So 27 times four is 108 ones. Now I'm in the tens. So I'm gonna cross that out. Well, there's the zero and now I have seven and two. And that was easy, right? Eight, seven, and three, 378. So this is going to be 378 plus four times four is 16. Now I'm going to add these up. I'm going to add my ones place first. Six plus eight equals 14. Very good. Regroup my one. One plus seven equals eight plus the one more equals nine. And one plus three, um, that's it. And then I bring down my three, 394, because this is in the tens. I didn't regroup. So one plus seven equals eight plus one more is nine. If this part confuses you, then simply stack your numbers. There is nothing wrong with stacking. 14, seven, eight, nine, and bring down your three and you still get the same answer. So there is nothing wrong with stacking it. So the answer to this one is going to be B. It's not C, oh my gosh, it's not 6,000. There's no way that could be 6,000. And it can't be 1,000, so you were only choosing between A and B. Process of elimination. Guys, that is it for tonight's homework. Please make sure that you have that ready so that we can review 
Um, and then I can take a look at, we're going to be practicing more multiplication tomorrow. Um, see you. Have a great evening. Show me that one if you did that extra problem for a Jolly Rancher. Take care. Bye.